The IMSA 8080 was an early microcomputer released in late 1975 based on the Intel 8080 and S100 bus. It was a clone of its main competitor, the earlier MITS Altair 8800. The IMSA is largely regarded as the first clone microcomputer. In total, between 17,000 and 20,000 units were produced from 1975 to 1978. IMSA was the first company to commercially license the CPM operating system from its creator, Gary Kildall. Once the most popular operating system in the world for microcomputers until eventually eclipsed by Microsoft DOS in the early 1980s. IMSA's founder, Bill Millard, went on to form Computerland, once the largest and most successful computer retail franchises of the 1970s and 80s. Unfortunately, these early computer systems were very difficult to program and operate for the general public, and there was very little software available. Within just a year or two, more user-friendly computers appeared on the market, and IMS Associates filed for bankruptcy in 1979. Many are familiar with the IMSA 8080 from the 1983 film War Games, where the main character, Matthew Broderick, uses one to hack a military supercomputer and almost cause a nuclear war. This IMSA, running at two megahertz, has four 4K boards for a total of 16K of memory, one serial port and cutter monitor with 1K of scratch pad RAM for the cutter bootloader. And what I'm going to show you now is the IMSA 8080 running. I have the machine up and running right now. And like I mentioned before, it was a clone to the Altair 8080. So what ran on the Altair would run on the IMSA. So one of the things that I'm going to demonstrate is actually the first thing that the Altair ever did was actually play music. And it did it by modulating the, uh, the clock on the computer. Um, and it was one of the first things that was ever done on the machine. So in order for me to do that, we're going to use this program called Cutter. And Cutter is a really cool little ROM utility. And the, the purpose of it is to allow you to have a terminal interface into the machine. So to demonstrate Cutter real quick, I'm going to just do a, a memory dump. It only has three or four commands. So one of the commands is dump memory. So I'm going to click in here and we can actually view what's in a memory location. So I'm going to do 000 to 00FF and I'm going to hit return and right now it is outputting the information of what's in the memory. And we can also modify memory and actually put something into a memory location. Now we could do the exact same thing by flipping the switches here and actually store something into memory as well. But being able to do it through a serial interface, a terminal that one would use, and I'm just using terminal emulation software, makes it much more convenient. So I'm going to actually change in this memory location at 0000, instead of that 00, I'm going to make it, let's say, uh, uh, 7. So to do that, we're going to type ENT. And then I'm going to type in the memory location. And it now gives me a prompt to decide what to put in there. And I'm going to type in 07. And it automatically will increment to the next one. So if that's 07, the next one, let's say, would be 08. And then I'm going to break out. And now, if we do dump 000 to 000F, that's just that first row, you'll see there's our seven and there's our eight that we we're just able to put in. And what this allowed you to do was obviously save a lot of time to enter in information. We could have done the exact same thing here by manipulating the address bus to find memory location 0000, put in there 07, deposit it, deposit next, 
et cetera, et cetera. And we could have done that one by one by one by one by one. Having cutter makes it just that much easier. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually gonna upload, same process, and now I'm gonna hit paste, and I'm gonna be sending right now the information for this music. And actually what I need to do real quick is slow it down for a second because most likely when it's sent it, it sent it a little too quick. So I'm going to add a little bit of a delay when I send it and reset right now. ENTR 000. Oh, that's a mistake. ENTR 000. And I'm going to paste it. And you can see we're sending in now the code. And <clears throat> once this code is uploaded, we're going to execute it. And the other cool thing is that we can actually run the code directly through the interface, or we can run it directly through the machine, through the, the keypad. So to, to run this, we're just going to hit execute 0000, which means it'll start executing the code there. And I'm going to switch on this AM radio. And you notice right now there's really not much, there's no sound to it, just noise, static. It's picking up a little bit of the what's happening in the machine. And as soon as we execute, I can tune this. Put it a little closer. So the IMSA is playing music right now, and this actually is one of the first things that the Altair did as well. And it's doing this by varying the frequencies of the pulses, and because the processor is running, these pulses that are being varied is being picked up on the AM radio from the microprocessor. Pretty cool. This is actually one of, like I said, the first things that these machines ever did. And if we stop it, you'll notice that we still, so I'm gonna keep it there, but I'm gonna stop it with this. We just stopped the program. And I'm gonna show you, the program's still there. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna reset it. I'm gonna examine the spot at zero, zero, zero. This would be the next one. So that's 1C, 00, 7E, FE, FF. So it's all there. I'm gonna go back to zero, examine it, and I'm gonna hit run. And once I hit run, the program will start again. Pretty crazy, huh? I hope you've enjoyed watching and learning a little bit about the IMSA 88.